Now, from the Signature Bank Studios. This is Chicago's Morning Answer with Dan Proft and Amy Jacobson on AM560, The Answer. Good morning, Amy Jacobson, John Anthony, and for Dan Prof today. Hey. So, uh, no more shot spotter, but there nope. is a new creation from our really good friends over there at CWB Chicago. They have Brandon bodies, wow. which is, I mean, it's so sick and sad, but this is just an example of how you take away a governmental tool to protect the people of Chicago, and when it's gone, people are going to lose their lives. Well, they have. They have. And so we had Brandon Buddy number one. Yesterday and now Brandon bodies Body number two uh, happened about uh, 10 o'clock last night at, in the um, 5700 block of Southwood Street and probably somebody that could have been saved because people aren't calling 911 yeah, no one called 911 on the second body. I mean when it went away you have aldermen that wanted it that are telling Chicagoans please if you hear a gunshot call 911. Yeah. They're reminding citizens to call 911 if they hear anything that sounds remotely like gunfire. Other aldermen are calling it the most reckless and dangerous policy decision in Chicago's history. And we welcome back to the program one alderman who voted against getting rid of shot spotter, and that's our good friend Alderman Beal. How are you? I'm wonderful. How are this morning? Good. So uh, what was it like there? I mean, I've never seen – I'm glad it was 34 to 14, I believe, or 33-14 – um, but I've never seen a mayor have the support of only 14 aldermen. Right. And even the 14 that uh, voted with the mayor, that was a soft 14. Uh, you know, you probably only have about seven or eight that are hardcore uh, lefties that are with the mayor 100 percent. And uh, and he was calling around and it was a full court press. Um, and you see, even with the mayor calling around on a full court press to get people to vote his way, he still lost the vote 33 to 14. So that's a that's an overwhelming majority of the city council that are saying, hey, we need this technology. And he's totally, totally ignoring it. And it just really defies logic for somebody to dig in and say, we're going to get rid of something and not have something in place, Amy. I just don't understand it. How do you just not have anything in place, and but you, you're going to get rid of it? Now you want to issue an RFI, which means absolutely nothing. There's only one company in the country that, that offers this kind of technology, and that's ShotSpotter. And so, you know, we just don't understand. You know, we all make campaign promises when you're running for higher mm -hmm. office and things like that. But, when, you know, governing is different from campaigning. And this mayor has not made the transition to start governing. Governing means you get in, you look at the data, you analyze it, and you do what's best for the entire city. You don't do what's best for your, your campaign promise. We, you know, you made a campaign promise. It wasn't a good one once you get in and you see the, the data and the logic and you retract that. People respect that more if you say, hey, I looked at the data. I'm making, I'm making an educated decision to, you know, we need to keep this technology. But if you throw the baby out with the bathwater and not have anything in place. This is just really defying logic, and I don't understand this. And this is the worst decision I've ever seen in my 25 years as being a, a city official. And he says that shot spotter is racist. How is that racist? Because we have shot spotter up, you know, where it's you know predominantly a white neighborhood. Well, you know, this mayor, unfortunately, uh, he's playing a race card more than the last mayor did. Um, when things don't go your way, um, you know, you play the race card. And that, that really hate, I mean, that really, when you play the, the race card, you know, that really hurts the cause in the long run. Because when, when there is injustice, when there is, you know, um, things like that that take place, it really hurts the cause when you really need to invoke the race card. Wow. Uh, Alderman Bill, uh, so good to hear from you. I haven't seen you since you came down to Will County when I was state rep down there. Uh, so good to hear from you, brother. <laughs> it's been a, it's been a while. It's been a while. Um, you know, as as you look at what's happening with Pedro Martinez, the um, uh, CPS CEO, and and Brandon Johnson basically telling him to step down, and <laughs> but a when dictator. does right? When does the elected Chicago school board or uh, take over? And if Stacey Davis Gates and Brandon get their way, they're able to basically 
uh, run CPS. No, it's a dictatorship. Right, it, it would be. Uh, when does that take effect, and how will that affect CPS and, and the students? Uh, right now, half of the, the elected school board is up in this coming election right now. Okay. And I think that I think that's why you see such a big full court press to get Pedro out is because right now, CTU has no money. All right. They spent all their money on the last couple of mayoral elections and they only have about four. Last I looked, it was like forty two thousand in mm. their account. And so they have no money to play in these school board elections. So they're running the risk of. You know, even though we wanted the school board uh, um, elections and we want the elected school board, they have no money to play in those races. And mm -hmm. so right now they're trying to get everything they want before the election. And so that's why you see the full court press to get Pedro out so they can get this big, unrealistic 9 percent raise and they can get this unrealistic contract that they're trying to get. And Pedro, to his credit, is standing firm. Yep. It doesn't make it doesn't make sense to go out and borrow eight hundred million dollars on a payday loan to to fund these five million dollars in cuts, and then the, and then they estimate about three hundred million with this new contract. And so Pedro saying this is not physically responsible. Th you know, it doesn't make sense. This will bankrupt the the system. But C CTU doesn't care about mm -hmm. that. They want mm -hmm. what they want. They spent their money to get their mayor. Even though he's probably going to be one of the worst mayors in this in in the city's history, and they they <laughs> that's saying a lot. Well, and, and he's not going to win re-election. There's no way in hell. I don't care what he says or what he thinks. It's not going to happen. Well, anybody with an approval rating at this point at 22 percent is going to be very difficult to turn the ship around. All right, and so um, you know when you watch everything that's happening, the budget deficit that we have this year, we have a 230 million dollar budget deficit this year that we have to fill going into next year. There's a $1.3 billion deficit going next year. And so he's staring down the crime, getting rid of shot spotter, people dying in the street, the increase in taxes on CPS on um, CPS is that increased taxes on the city side. I just don't understand how you recover from a approval rating like this with all these, you know, big hurdles, you know, basically looking down your throat. And, and when you look at how now, I I heard a report that it was over four hundred million that has been spent on the illegal uh, migrant issue. When you look at it's that number, that. a bit more, whoa, way more than that. Yeah, they spent fifty one million yeah. for three months Jeez. to house yeah. illegals here. But when you when yeah. you yeah, when you look at that, I mean, and then you don't want to close schools that are non performing. I mean, what does that say to the taxpayer of Chicago, to the taxpayers of Chicago? Well, it sends the wrong message. Like you said, I mean, you just hit it on the head. When you look at um, Douglas uh, Elementary, that's a school that only has 28 students in it, but they have 39 administrators in the building. Why, why is that school open? Nobody understands. Why is that school even open? Take those kids, put them in another school, and save their money, close the school. However, you know, the mayor makes a comment, well, you know, you fund it, they'll come. We've, we've lost over 100,000 students over the last 10 years. The kids are not coming. People are not moving to Chicago because of the crime and the taxes and everything that's happening. We, you know, I'm just the biggest thing that that's really, really getting to me right now is, you know, and we have a good core of common sense aldermen here in the city of Chicago that are starting to stand up. Yeah. We need more to stand up to stop this injustice that's happening and save this city. The city needs saving, and this leadership, this lefty leadership that you see on the fifth floor right now, is not the answer. Oh, that was a bold statement. Yeah. Well, let's quickly go back to Shot Spotter, um, because Brandon Bodies. You know, we talked about it at the top of the show. No one called nine one one when this woman was shot in the seventy seven hundred block of South Dobson, and on nine fifteen mm -hmm. on Monday. Okay, so she had suffered two gunshot wounds to the leg, in critical condition at University of Chicago Medical Center. Uh, she told police that a man in a black car shot her, but officers found shell casings and all that. And a witness told police, are you ready, that he heard a gunshot in the area and saw the woman run into the gangway and collapse, but he didn't call 911 about it. Wow. Absolutely. And that's, and what, that's the problem. Yeah. That's the problem. Over 80% 80, 80 of gunshots that go out here in the city of Chicago are go, going unreported by, by a follow-up 911 call. And that's why Shot Spotter was so effective. You know, that young lady is sitting there, got shot, unfortunately, could have got aid. We could have got her to the hospital in time and saved her life. 
Uh, but instead, now people are going to be left to bleed out in the streets. You know, when people call 911, even if you say, hey, I hear gunshots in the middle of the night. Well, where did they come from? What direction? How many gunshots? You can't answer any of those questions if you're waking up in the middle of the night hearing gunfire. But I can tell you what. Shot spotter will tell you exactly within 10 feet where that gunshot came from, mm-hmm. how many gunshots rang out. Uh, and, and, and there's just so much more that can be added to that. And so, you know, it did, it just defies logic. And I know I keep saying that, but it defies logic and common sense on why you get rid of shot spotter and not have something in place. But I think people in the city have to realize that this is a dictatorship. I mean, the vote was 33 to 14 to keep it because residents like myself, you contact your alderman and say, I want to keep shot spotter. Okay, so the people right. of Chicago have spoken, but he vetoes it. Wow. So he said, well, why even take well, a vote in the first place? I mean, can <laughs> we change the system here? <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, we, we there, were, there were a couple of aldermen that, uh, you know, unfortunately voted against it who have a lot of gunfire sh- in their ward. Um, and then you had uh, another alderman that took a walk because the mayor asked him to take a walk. And, and, and we had two aldermen that weren't there. And so we believe that and even though it's been turned off, hopefully, you know, within the next month or so, you know, we can have a city council meeting and we can override this mayor with a veto because we were only one vote short of it being veto proof. We needed 34. We got 33. Told you oh, that's right. I told you it was a structured vote. I told yeah. You and I know that alderman who walked. Yeah. He just he was on, you know, yeah. he voted to keep shot spotter. And then the second time they took a vote, he walked. Yeah. Because uh, Brandon uh, Johnson got to him. I wonder what he promised. Him. Right. But, but well, I, I don't know what you can promise anybody with a one point three billion dollar deficit. There's not much to promise. Yeah, I got two questions. Are these politicians listening to the voters? And you guys are looking for a billion dollars as it, as it relates to your budget. I mean, is, where is it, that going to come are, from? Are, are taxes going to be raised on the people of Chicago? Oh, absolutely. Okay. There's no. I've never in my 25 years seen a budget hole this big. Um, you know, under um, you know Lori in the last election. Um, last cycle, we did have a budget deficit, but that was due to COVID. But we had COVID money to plug the hole. Mm-hmm. We have nothing to plug this hole other than property taxes, fines, and fees. And so this mayor, which is, um, you know, he's anti-police, and we know we have over 2,000 vacancies in the police department right now. They're going to go after that police budget. They're going to go after that police budget, and they're probably going to try to eliminate the majority of those 2,000 vacancies and not try to fill them in order to start plugging the hole as far as our deficit is concerned because I've never seen a hole this big um, and so it's going to it's going to be painful yeah, but it, the thing is we don't have the right person that's listening to the people to plug this hole to understand how do we climb out of this we don't have he's not listening to people with experience the people in this city who know what's going on who have the pulse of the city of Chicago like you said you're not listening to 33 percent of the aldermen in the city of Chicago telling you we want this technology and you're saying I know best and and get rid of this technology. It doesn't make sense. And then we give that COVID money to migrants instead of to like shocks shot spotter to keep that going. I, it, it, it's the logic is it's just it's unbelievable. There is no me. logic there. That's the problem. Yeah, that's the problem. there's no rationality. There's no reason. It's all emotional. And, and the activists are running Chicago right now. That's the dictatorship. You know, it's not just CTU, but it's a lot of the activists. Because I want, what's the role of the activists and and Brandon Johnson getting rid of Shot Spotter too? Because you know they used to be called gangs, but now they're called activists. <laughs> <laughs> you don't have to answer no. that question if you don't. Want. But <laughs> hey, like, I want to no, tell you, Alderman, I was in your ward picking up garbage with uh, Venezuelan migrants, and they're all over Roseland, and we cleaned up everywhere. A, yes, everywhere. But the ones that I were, I mean, not they're not all criminals. I understand that. But a lot of them have a lot of time on their hands because um, they can't get work permits. And so how do we solve this problem? Well, the thing is, you have to really solve it on the federal level first. And you cannot give work permits to people who have come here illegally and, you know, just not come through the process. You have that's why you see so much dissension in, in certain communities. You have to work and give those work permits that have come here legally, come here the right way. And, you know, and have gone through the channels. First of all, we don't know who's all here. Sure. We do know that a lot of their gang members are here. Mm-hmm. They emptied out their jails. We know that for a fact. And they sent them here. And so when you have, you know, all these different factions, we have to be careful. And 
you cannot continue to say we're a sanctuary city and not cooperate with ICE when you detain and arrest somebody that are doing something to harm us and they're not here legally and not deport them and not prosecute them. That is also driving a lot of the problems that we're having because they know nothing is going to happen to them. You know, and, and when you have their gang factions that have come here, they're trying to set up their, their gang networks here. And I'm going to tell you, they don't care. They don't care about committing crimes. They don't care about killing. You just saw in the paper yesterday, a uh, Venezuelan killed somebody who was begging for their life, yeah. and, and, and they killed him. Okay, is that person being arrested? Are they being charged? Are they being deported? Are they sent back? Or are they going to be sent, you know, put in jail for the rest of their lives? We don't know. And so these are a lot of questions that we need, we need answers to because we have to make sure the city of Chicago is protected if we're going to grow. If this city is going to rebound, we got to protect our citizens first because people who have the means are now leaving the city of Chicago. And what's that going to leave? People that are coming to Chicago don't have the means. So we can't continue to take care of people who don't have the means to pay taxes and contribute to society because eventually we're going to head towards bankruptcy, which we don't want. But that's the direction in which we're going. We're going towards bankrupting the city of Chicago. We're wow. going to become Detroit. What, what? Like I told Dan when this all started, when I saw all those stores leaving Michigan Avenue, like this reminds me of D-Town. I was there for two years, two days, but I just remember. And then also, too, when kids would, you know, we, you'd have a school. Yeah. John and Alderman, yep. you would, and the population became, you know, 30 or less. Kids would show up at school and there'd be a sign, your school's closed, go to blah, 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 right. down, you know, four blocks over mm -hmm. and meet your teacher in room right. 102. Can, That's can, what they did. You know, you know, um, Alderman, when, when I was in the General Assembly, I actually um, championed Chapter 9 bankruptcy protection. Because what we saw what happened after Detroit, and then we voted uh, for the pension uh, resolve, and I voted in in the in the in the affirmative. Um, are you okay with with a Chapter Nine bankruptcy protection for the city of Chicago? Well, you know what, we have to weigh all options um, because we do know our pension system is broken. That is what's bankrupt, really bankrupting the city of Chicago is our pension system. The amount of money we're paying on pensions is is just unrealistic, and it's because you know, we're being forced to sign and get into contracts like CTU is trying to get us into, which benefits their small group, but it's going to bankrupt the system. You can't do that. You have to be able to make sure that the money is, is being spent and is being spent right. And because only, only I think $13 of every $100 is actually going into the classroom. That's, that's, those are some unrealistic numbers, man, when you look at that. So we have to look at it. We have to make sure taxpayer dollars are being spent and being spent wisely. And we can't continue to fatten the frog, you know, which is the CTU in here in the city of Chicago. And because we are, we know their whole agenda, most of their money is going towards campaigns. They're yeah. no longer a union. They're a political operation. And so they're using public dollars to fund their candidates to get them into office and they're using taxpayer dollars to do it. Wow. All right. Alderman Beale, always a pleasure. Alderman of the Ninth Ward. And you can follow him on X at Alderman underscore Beale, B E A L E. Thank you so much, Alderman. And we'll have you back soon. Thank you. Got to get you on my Thanks show. Thanks for having me. I got to get you on my show yeah. as well. Okay. <laughs> All right. Let me know. All right. All right. Thank you so much. You. And he joined us on our turnkey.pro answer line. It's what Chicago is talking about. It's Chicago's morning answer with Dan and Amy on AM 560. The answer. It's Jeep Adventure Days, and Bettenhausen Chrysler Dodge Jeep Ram on 159th Street in Tinley Park has your ticket to anywhere. Hurry into Bettenhausen and get huge savings off MSRP on a new Grand Cherokee, Jeep Wrangler, or Jeep Gladiator. Bettenhausen has big savings on a new Ram 1500 or new Chrysler Pacifica. Bettenhausen has the Midwest's best selection. Choose from over 900 vehicles with no hassle and no haggle. Showroom never closes at BettenhausenCDJR.com. Balance of nature, love it. Justin just came back from. Was that your honeymoon, by the way?